Hello partners, welcome to the Go Show, your weekly dose of cryptocurrency using my stories for your investment. Today is the third episode and this is shaping up to be my very best episode and I'm gonna talk about my way to become a billionaire. In the next few minutes, I will begin to tell you my strategy to become a billionaire in order to fulfill the mission of the Go and Partners Validator to end poverty, to end discrimination, to end hunger, and to end violence. Let's start. Do you know how hard it is to become a billionaire? A billion is around nine zeros and one digit to become a billionaire. It is so difficult. Imagine you are a bank manager in the Philippines and you are earning 2.5 million pesos or around $50,000 every year. And if you don't spend a single cent or a single peso, it takes 20,000 years for you to become a billionaire. How is that possible? In order for you to become a billionaire, do you think it's possible for you to do that as an employee? with one stream of income or do you need to have multiple streams of income to become a billionaire today we will talk about my inspirations the people that i look up to in the philippines and overseas as to how they became billionaires there are many ways for you to become a billionaire you can pass on as a trust fund for you many Billionaires have handed out their hard-earned wealth to their children and their children's children. For most people, they became billionaires through humble beginnings. The rags to the riches story of these billionaires is an inspiration. If they can do it, you and I can also do it. It is important for us to understand and delve deeply into the stories of these people. Let us begin with the first person. If you don't know Jeff Bezos, is the founder, former CEO, and chairman of Amazon. Amazon is the known, the number one e-commerce provider in the United States. And now around the world, they have expanded their operations and they have a strong foothold on goods delivery. They started with just books. Then they expanded to multiple lines. And in one word, if you talk about e-commerce, the word that we can equate it to is Amazon. For me, Jeff Bezos is what I would dub as the Mr. Future Proofer Visionary. He comes from a well-to-do family. He was a quintessential honor student and he actually graduated from Princeton University as a summa cum laude. He started working in financial institutions in the banking sector but he decided to take that leap of faith and he started a new trend with the advent of the internet, the dot-com boom. And it's with the delivery of books. At first, he was burning a lot of money, but then he was able to show numbers growing year after year after year to the point that the bail competition, Barnes and Nobles had to also start their website to compete against him. But by the time that the competitors entered the scene, he already dominated the entire industry. What I find very daunting and courageous with this characteristic as an entrepreneur is that after graduating from an Ivy League, summa cum laude, he was already getting paid a six-figure salary. But then when he tendered this resignation, his boss told him, Think about this. Think about this, Jeff. You're already earning a lot. You could already become a millionaire. Why are you leaving this company? Jeff thought about it for a week. Even earlier than a week, he was already thinking, I want to make a change. I want to dominate. And in this age, this is the dot-com era. I need to become an entrepreneur and get this business going. He tendered this resignation. Then he started... Amazon, you know, with a seed fund coming from his family of a few hundred thousand dollars, he took that leap of faith. He struggled. He started just in his backyard. And years after, 
he is now one of the richest, if not the richest, billionaire in the world. He saw something. We did it. And that is why I call him Mr. Future Hoover, the visionary. Number two is Warren Buffett of Berkshire Hathaway. This billionaire, his story is one that I will never forget. I call him Mr. Intelligent Investor. If you don't know him, he is the chairman of Berkshire Hathaway. He is one of the most successful billionaires worth over a hundred billion dollars. As of 2023, despite the economic downturn, he is worth over a hundred twenty billion dollars. Can you imagine? Many people have lost in the stock market, but Berkshire Hathaway with the ingenious plan and strategy of his fund, he is able to make his clients make money throughout the pandemic. What you didn't know is that his mentor, when he was in his early 20s, Benjamin Graham, was teaching him to look at the fundamentals, the analysis, and the numbers, the financial statements, the many of the companies that they invest in has taught him how to do intelligent investing. However, Warren Buffett had another plan. He learned to invest. You also need not just to diversify in five, seven, ten different companies, but to focus on a few companies. And he was looking at other ways to look at companies that are undervalued, but have long-term major impact to the society at large. His most famous investments are Apple, Bank of America, and Coca-Cola. Do you know that many people, before they even start investing in their first stocks, they would Google what are the investments of Warren Buffett today, 2022 or 2023. You always look at what he is currently holding and they follow his strategy in investing. The sad news is that today his investment partner, his sidekick, Charlie Munger, has passed away at 99 years old. Rest in peace. Both of them are the towering icons in American stock market trading and investment. And today, we lost an icon, a legend in the industry. While the strategy of Berkshire Hathaway has made countless Americans millionaires throughout the past generations, did you know that Warren Buffett has also believed in investing in the index fund. He has actually made a bet famously before with another value investor. And he said that within 10 years, let's compare our portfolio. And in those 10 years, when he entered the market and was able to time the investment in the index fund, he was able to outperform with the person that he was betting with. What I learned from him is that there's no one strategy that would fit everyone. Investments has different strategies, and he was able to use multiple strategies while he benefited the most from value and intelligent investing. He was able to also utilize index fund investment strategy to help him and also his clients. Third is Mr. Shark Tank. When I was young, Mark Cuban was one of my idols because he was the owner the famous NBA team, the Dallas Mavericks. Just so you know that Mark Cuban, as of today, has sold his company at $3.5 billion when he bought it at less than $300 million over 20 years ago. What I like about Mark Cuban is that he came from humble beginnings. When he was young, he was buying trash bags for $3 and selling it for six dollars and you can see as a very young person he was wired to do sales he was wired to make money his big break was with micro solutions when he sold it for six million dollars to CompuServe. then he started investing in the stock market and it was the time 
of the dot com era, and he was able to make over $25 million. While many would reinvest in other stocks, he took profit, he lived the life, traveled around the world, bought a private jet, and had so much fun. And for him, he actually said that his main motivation was actually freedom and have control over his time. And that way, he did it in style. In the dot com era, in the 90s, he started AudioMet, and his main motivation was actually to broadcast sports. He was a sports fan. He owns the Dallas Mavericks, and because he loved sports so much, he wanted to stream the Indiana Hoosier games. When he started it, it started to gain a lot of traction. Then he actually changed and rebranded it to Broadcast.com. And Broadcast.com helped stream the first ever Victoria's Secret fashion show. And that year, he was able to sell Broadcast.com to Yahoo.com for a whopping $5.7 billion. And that time, he actually became a billionaire. From a $3 to $6 trash bag to a $5.7 billion cash grab. Next is about the heart, the heart and soul, the queen of pop and now media, none other than Oprah Winfrey. If you don't know, she owns the broadcast network, owned her Oprah Winfrey network, and she is now worth over $2.8 billion. But did you know that it did not start this way? In her 20s, she became the youngest black female news anchor. But did you know that she got fired and she had to start again from the ground up? Leading to the way that she became known for her show, The Oprah Winfrey Show, which became number one almost from 1980s all the way to the year 2000s. But then she took that leap of faith and started to produce her own content, her own show, and her own broadcast network. For me, what I learned from her is that it's all about the heart. There's so many other talk shows out there, but hers stands out because she gives it all. And her audience feeds off that energy, reverberates through that energy, her sincerity, the genuineness that comes from her. With everyone that she brings to her show, she's able to illuminate the strengths, the stories, the passions of people who are interviewed in her show. And that is what we, in the Go Show, want to aspire to be. When we talk about genuine stories, when we talk about the average investor, the man on the street, the person who starts from humble beginnings. The story of Linda, the story of Isa, the story of Sarah. We want to illuminate and make these stories highlighted in this show, the Go Show for you. The four qualities that I learned from these four immensely successful billionaires are Mr. Future Proofer, Jeff Bezos, Mr. Intelligent Investor, Warren Buffett. Mr. Risk Taker, Mark Cuban. And last but not the least, it's all about the heart, Oprah Winfrey. And with those four stories, I would like to put in my life to use it as my inspiration to become a billionaire in order to help the mission and the vision of the Go and Partners Validator. Allow me to take you through a journey through the three phases of my life. Young Albert, the Today Albert, and the Future Albert. Let me begin by talking about the Young Albert. Coming from a Filipino-Chinese family, I always hear my family members talk about how to make money grow. When I was young, every time, I've always received these ao pao or what we call as the red packets. Every time I would get it from my alma or my grandmother and through my cousins, aunts, my relatives, each Christmas, I would collect as much money as I can, and I would tell my mom, keep the money, put it in the bank. I was taught to actually save 
and make my money grow by putting it in the bank and only using it for the most important things that I care about. In Filipino terms, we call it kuripot. I was very, very thrifty because I struggled a lot every time I would go to Toys R Us or in a toy store in a video game shop. I would always struggle whether I would use the money that I have in the bank to buy these toys or not. And I will always get my way because I would tell my parents to buy the toys instead of using my savings. One way for them to buy the toy instead of me using my money was through my charms. In high school, my allowance was only enough for me to eat in school every day. To increase my spending money, I was able to sell and burn CDs for my classmates. That was my business at the time. I was selling it for 150 pesos for every CD, and each CD would only cost 16 pesos. For the Gen Zs out there, what it meant was that it was called customization of songs because these MP3s, my friends, all of them had CD players and they would always go to me. I, would, I became the go-to guy and it was my first gig at the go show because all my friends in school would go to me to burn CDs for them. One more thing I couldn't forget is that because I was such an NBA basketball fan, I actually became a bookie for my friends in school. I would collect a commission and just accept payments from one better to another. And I would make a lot of money at that time and everything would go straight to the bank. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Actually, until today, some of my friends have not paid me yet. And if you're watching this show, you know who you are. You can pay me back in my mobile wallet in Gcash. As a young Albert, I learned to make money using three streams of income, using my charm, using ingenuity through burning CDs, and using my passion through basketball and by being a bookie through my friends in school. And by going with passion, the Albert today is a co-founder and the CEO of Beam and Go. It's a social impact e-commerce platform just like Jeff Bezos, but I'm using my passion to help Filipino migrant workers to be able to purchase goods directly for the basic needs of their family. What makes Limengo unique is that it allows the customization and the prioritization of the migrant worker in order for her to help her family. She can now choose the goods that she can send to her family using Limengo instead of just sending I have been doing this business for over nine years from conceptualization all the way to where it is today with over 200,000 registered members and 13,000 active users. We were able to reach this point by hiring people coming from the same background, OFW families, and also doing a lot of marketing through the grassroots level by going to different countries and understanding the needs, the problems of Filipinos overseas, which I know because I was one. I worked in Singapore again for over four years and four months. And in those four years, I saw the problems and the struggles of many Filipinos. I was there. I was in the trenches every Sunday seeing these Filipinos in Orchard Road, there in Lucky Plaza, lining up, sending money each time for their families and them complaining that they don't have enough for their families. I see a lot of them actually becoming victims of loan sharks because their only way of showing love for their families is to send more to buy the bicycle, the toys, the birthday celebrations of their son and daughter when all they needed to do was to bring that money home with them physically there with their children in the Philippines. And Beam and Go 
allows them to become better in terms of budgeting, becoming financially literate, understanding how to prioritize basic needs from wants and celebrations from budgeting as early as January for their December Christmas celebration. We do it in Bimengo and we are proud to be able to help thousands of Filipinos become better in terms of their finances. And the most popular product that we have, which constitutes 90% of our sales, is known as our electronic gift voucher. This voucher allows the customization of the vouchers that are sent to the groceries for their family members that actually prohibits them from using it for alcohol and cigarettes. It became so popular that in many countries like Hong Kong and Singapore, the domestic helpers would choose our product so that it won't be misused by their husbands for womanizing, drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, and also misusing it for other vices. Today, this product we have expanded to over 30 groceries and brands and over 2,000 branches all over the Philippines. And this I am very proud of. And this actually led me to Corium. Corium has this smart token, programmable money technology that allows governments to be able to build what we call a central bank digital currencies so that the money can actually be programmed only for the basic needs of the recipients. As you know, in the Philippines, there is an immense level of poverty. And in fact, in the Philippines, almost half or 48% of the Philippines have rated themselves as poor. This is a nation in dire straits. And this is coming from the latest self-rated poverty study of the social weather stations on October 2023. And little did I know that Pimengo's digital gift voucher technology is now being developed even more into a more robust technology being studied by central banks to be able to deliver aid to the most indigent and needy people around the world. As a matter of fact, in Beam and Go, we were able to receive a grant coming from Celo, a blockchain company based in San Francisco, and a donor, JP Morgan, during the height of the pandemic, they donated $350,000 or $100 through a microfinance corporation in the Philippines through the Apoitis Foundation or RAPI. Ramon Aipoitis Foundation and gave it to over 3,400 micro and small entrepreneurs, mostly women who own Sari Sari Sports. They used our technology and we used it to build a micro site that is localized in the local Filipino dialect and we sent these gift vouchers to these women entrepreneurs to be able to top up the supplies that they have in the Sari Sari stores. They use $100 worth of grocery vouchers. Come to think of it, the digital gift voucher is a technology that may seem so highfalutin, hard to comprehend, complex in terms of development with technology from iteration to implementation through the grocery stores and the brands around the Philippines. But the impact of it is felt by the women who actually own these Sari Sari mom and pop shop stores in the Philippines. This made a lasting impact that it was even featured in the World Bank study in 2021. And this is why we want to continue this forever. Not just in the Philippines, but to scale it globally.
And I ask myself again, using the, the lessons coming from the four billionaires, how do I accelerate my plan to be a billionaire in order to fulfill my mission? In my research, just like how I'm able to learn from Warren Buffett is to be able to look at value companies. And today the trend is blockchain and cryptocurrency. And as I scan over thousands upon thousands of cryptocurrencies and blockchains, I believe that Corium will be one of the leading blockchains for enterprises and businesses in the future. That is why in my bullishness in Corium, I decided two months ago to start my social impact validator in Corium called the Go and Partners Validator. What makes my social impact validator unique is that half of the profits I'm earning in the commission is meant to give back to the initiatives of Go and Partners Validator, beginning by helping the Filipinos migrant workers come back home in the Philippines and funding a lot of the initiatives for them to stand up and be close to their families and to start again. Since I started, I was shocked to find that over 70 individuals have started to stake, invest in Poyo and stake in my validator. Many of them have even direct messaged me, Albert, your initiatives are so heartfelt. I, after hearing your story and what we're trying to do, I want to stake and invest in you. I want to stake and invest in your validator because you want to make a difference in the world. And today, our numbers continue to grow. We have people coming from the UK, the United States, the Philippines, Many of them are my family, friends, classmates, people who are in the banking sector, the MNCs, the multinational corporations, these people that I know who trusted and believed me as a young person all the way to who I am today and the success of Vivendo. They said, Albert, if there's anyone who could do it, I believe you will be one of them that will achieve it. And the best part, are the people who are investing in the Go and Partners Validator, who I actually do not know. I've only learned of them through Twitter, through my tweets. They probably heard of me through the Go Show. This is only the third episode of the show. Or they've heard me talk about Him and Go through the videos and the areas and the times that I was featured through an event, through a TV interview, because they saw that I am a person who wants to give back to the community. I do not know that there are many people just waiting to help. I want to help initiatives. And they are here staking in my validator and helping me make sure that the initiatives that I have to end poverty, to end violence, to end hunger, and to end discrimination. And now I am just waiting for you. And now that wraps up the third episode of the Go Show and see you on our next episode, the Chinoy in Week.